It's 6.15 on Thursday, April 20th. I'm calling the Finance Committee meeting to order. First thing on the agenda is the meeting minutes from April 11th. I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes of the meeting of April 11th. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I wasn't here, was I? Those mm -hmm. are the ones Karen took. It was that Tuesday. Yeah, she says you were here. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't I, I even looked at those before we came. Um, all right, and now we have the, from the 14th, Four, the last, last Thursday. 13th? I make the motion that we approve the minutes of last, of April 13th. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, back to the budget. Don't all speak at once. So, what do you want? Where do you want to start with it? Where we have. Do you want we currently have. So I know that as I walked in here, I knew I was informed of changes. But I understand that we have the uh, two and a half override budget, the needs budget. We know what that is, um, and we have information on that. We also have now a balance budget if the override doesn't doesn't pass and fails. So that's where we are with with the budget situation. We have two that were. That we're working with. Tommy, welcome back, buddy. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what else do we need to discuss on that, Kim? Anything at all? Uh, we can discuss anything we want. Um, it was brought, I know I sent it out today, it was brought to my attention, and if it was brought up, I guess I forgot, uh, that Cable is looking for $6,000 of general fund monies um, for closed captioning. I would think with the cuts being made, what do people think about that? Because that would be $6,000. Well, so I, I guess, so under two and a half override, that happens, right? That would happen. Mm -hmm. Without it, I mean, I, I'd be really, it's really unfortunate if you, somebody who's hired of hearing can't read the conversation that goes on, but it is, I mean, it's, the minutes are all published. So, I don't know, I, I times are what times are. I wouldn't be a favor, I guess. Well, I mean, so, um, to the chair, if I may, uh, candidly, I, I'm not sure we can just refer to minutes. I don't know if there's some accessibility requirements that come into uh, access to public access television in terms of closed captioning. So um, whether this is a, a mandate, I can't speak to that. I don't know if Becky or if someone in the cable studio can speak to that. But, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, if, if we have to provide this um, service as a part of our public access television, uh, the town uh, the town's responsibility of the 6000 is something that we provide. Okay. looks like we have our cable access television so, representative so it, available. Are, are these things closed captioned now? No. No. Well, so, actually, it's a little more complicated than that. What mm -hmm. comes out of our studio is not closed captioned. Okay. YouTube does its own closed captioning. I don't know how it's turned on or off or any of that, but it's nothing to do with what we broadcast. It's nothing to do with what we provide on the Internet. Um, this is a requirement of both the FCC, which we could get around, and the American with Disabilities Act that we cannot. And town council suggests that it, the reason this was put into general fund is town council suggests strong that the ADA considers it a responsibility of the town, not the responsibility of the, of the organization within town that's doing cable. If we were a separate 501c3, it might be different, but it's not. Um, we have run for a number of years the way that we have. What is, so we rep, it, not funding that represents the same risk that we have taken 
for however many years has been a requirement and we weren't really aware of it. So it is up to you all to decide if we should meet that requirement or take a risk and hope that, the, that nobody complains to the federal government and the federal government comes after us. And I mean us, the town, not us cable. It's no different than not funding the stormwater last week. Okay. How much money is in the uh, public access <clears throat> fund? I don't have that number off the top of my head. What I do know is that our budget this year is... 243. Well, it's 243, which is $144,000 more than we received from, chart, from Spectrum in our license payment this year. But you have that money that's coming from pay access. That extra hundred isn't coming from general fund revenue. No, it's not. You're right. We're funding it from our larger fund that we have been collecting for a number of years. But we've overspent it by sixty-five or so last year, and another fifty or so the year before that. So that fund is rapidly depleting. So I guess the question would be, why why does it come up now? Oh, can I finish my... Go ahead. Sure. So, so we need, how much is in that fund? I don't know the well, number. We need, I, wouldn't that be a good place to start, though, so we would know that? I mean, you say you overspent, but you don't, you don't spend any more than you asked the town meeting to vote for. That is certainly true, and every okay, one of those and it's dollars always, for every year has come it, out of that. It's process. always been there's always been an excess in that account. Not an excess. I'm sorry to say I shouldn't say that. There's been a balance. My favorite. Um, there's a balance in that account. Yeah, there you go. Um, no, what's the other word? Um, surplus. 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 Free cash. Yeah. <laughs> So, we don't have that either. Kitty. <laughs> no, he likes it. Water and sewer free cash. Oh. <laughs> so, I, so I, I guess what I don't understand is you have money in that account. You ha you want the money to do this, and the money comes to the town for the town to use the whole town. That's not anything special. So why would it have to come from the general fund to satisfy the requirement? Because it's not that long until there is zero dollars in that account. But there isn't zero dollars yet. And so at what point is the town going to start paying for it? Because this is the same problem every year on every budget item. Because <laughs> we don't have any money. Yeah. Yeah. We don't well, have so the money. Number one, <laughs> right. and cable access is supposed to be paid for by what the contract the town has to make it happen. And it is. And well, it's, then that's where it should be. Well... I, I understand that's your opinion. It is my opinion. The only other thing I'm going to say in regards to this is it was brought up by the interim town administrator to take half of the town planner from the planning board's revolving fund, and that's going to deplete their revolving fund to next to nothing. So, I mean, I guess I look at it as, you know, we're expecting one revolving fund to pay for it or uh, a different fund. and. I, I'm just trying to understand where we draw the line. And, and my next question was going to be exactly what you just said. <clears throat> what 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 it made? Wh we haven't been doing this for a number of years. Yep. And what what was the trigger? Maybe it was an oversight, but what was the trigger now that it's up? Well, even more so, what brought it to the table today, rather than six months ago when we were doing that too. I I just didn't realize when we were went through all of the revenues. Okay. I didn't realize that there was a difference until I looked on the sheet today and saw that was two forty nine and a revenue side was only two forty three. Okay. And that's when I asked the question. Okay. Because it in my thoughts it was always it's a wash it comes in it goes out it comes in it goes out and I. Yeah, that's it might have been an oversight. I don't know. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. I'm just saying right. could have been my fault. I'm just saying that. But again, two budgets: override budget, non-override budget. If right. it's in the override, if the override budget passes, then it goes in. If it doesn't pass, it's one of the items that, because it wasn't there, we just can't put it back. 
It's just $6,000 that's in there now for without the override that we could potentially put to restore something else. Mm -hmm. Or partially restore something else. Hopefully it won't come to that, but... Mm -hmm. So uh, just through the chair. So, um, I mean, it, it does put the, the town at risk of being sued. So anything that same we know. Same as the storm water. Right. I know, no, but this is different. It's ADA. <laughs> no, it, no, it's not. Because an individual at any time can, can you are file correct. A, you are correct. I know. ADA is, is, a, is a, a lot. different animal. And it, it's something that we are it obligated to do. <laughs> yeah, okay. but not, no. The, people make it. People There's people that it's their job. They make money by just going and randomly looking at people's websites and suing them. And just looking at hundreds and thousands of websites. And here, here we are discussing it publicly. Right, exactly. And so. we, we, when we discuss the sewer, the sewer issue, public, the sewer drainage water issue, all of a sudden we got a letter. Yep. So, a day later. So now we can expect it. So, I mean, I agree with Tom at this point. You don't have the money to take it out of your general fund. Right. Um, so you're going to have to take it at the only source there is. But I do think it's important that you address any but, ADA requirements. But there are revolving, there are funds available that's to be saying. paid That's out exactly of that. what I said. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. right. I mean, that's the thing. I, I mean, we're expecting the planning board to pay 40 something thousand right. dollars out of theirs that will deplete theirs greatly. Right. I understood certain things so. have to be addressed. Right. And we don't have the funds to address them through the general right. fund. So they need to be addressed in alternative ways. And where we've hit a lot of the departments, I just right. That so that, so why wouldn't that budget on that committee take and adjust their request under what's available mm -hmm. and take the money out of what's there and, and cut something else out that I know they're going to say everything's needed, like, <clears throat> but it's got to be adjusted. If, if it has to be there, then something else has got to go and do it that way. You guys. This should also be part of the town's assess um, assessment for handicap accessibility. This should be an assessment, and this should be one of the things that it is addressed in that, and there should be a plan to address it already that should be ongoing. So Can anything to do with that accessibility, there's supposed to be a review, it's supposed to be identified, and it's supposed to be a transition plan. It's and supposed we? to be currently in place, which I believe is with the building inspector at this time. Okay. But it, and if it is not addressed and somebody asks for it, then the town is liable at the first suit. So. To your question on ADA, the, the town uh, many years ago did conduct a self-assessment and transition plan. I don't have the date. I did look at it uh, just yesterday mm -hmm. um, with costs associated, but obviously the challenge with any sort of assessment or plan or study is you have to address them, and then you have to update them. So the town, I'm sure, at this point is well overdue for that. And uh, you know, as the select board chair mentioned, or co-chair, sorry, um, you know, we have a lot of accessibility needs. If you go into the, the parking lot of town hall, that's one major accessibility need. Every town building has accessibility needs, and we have to have a cost associated with that for a transition plan to be included in our capital assessment. Okay. So I'm going to make the motion that we remove six thousand dollars out of the uh, without the override for peg access cable for the um, closed captioning that they can take from their other funds. For this year. Second, second, third. Any discussions? Fourth. What? Yeah. What is the line item for this in the budget? One ninety nine. Yep. So I, I, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I do have a comment. Uh, we're posting the warrant tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we are in a position now where we need to present a budget and a message to the voters in town meeting. Um, we're getting too close to be making changes of 6,000 or several thousand. Obviously, uh, uh, Gary had sent out earlier this week uh, a suggested change to also be deliberated tonight, but um, I really think that we should get come to a resolution tonight. That would be my recommendation. This be is the work in process without the override, which doesn't need to be finalized by the time uh, meeting comes. Because it won't be on the warrant. 
No, I understand that, but I think we need to present to town meeting and the voters well in advance, not a week before, not days before, weeks before, months before, okay. what they are getting for a town budget, what they are getting for associated town services. As a town, as the, the new town administrator, with really no idea what my budget is going to be and what my town departments are going to look like, uh, I'm not comfortable with going after tonight. I really hope that we can come to a resolution tonight. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Obviously, the committee is, the will of the committee is the will of the committee, but that just would be my professional recommendation. Town staff and, and people that I've talked to already, we, we spoke together at uh, on Tuesday, my first day, mm -hmm. at the Council on Aging. Uh, people want to know what the budget's going to look like and what they're going to be voting on. Okay. So then let's stick with the two and a half override budget. There was a change made um, from the one that was agreed upon by it, all of us. Madam Chair, I don't believe you've ever voted. There was a motion. Oh, oh uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So there was a change made, unbeknownst to all of us, of removing the $70,000 from RDIC. Why? The reasoning was that there wasn't enough room in the override, and I still see that we'd have enough. So I guess I want to understand that. I could speak to that a little bit, but Gary, if you could speak to this a little bit more, or, or Tamika. Um, it's my understanding that there was a conversation, I believe it may have been at the, at the select board level. Again, I'm asking for some support here mm -hmm. on information. On uh, There was a conversation with... Uh, the RDIC of, of the necessity and, and the request for uh, uh, 70000 in purchase services to do some marketing and some site work down at the uh, Rutland Heights property to, to kind of get movement on that property. Um, however, this is not necessarily needed in the form of a budget request. This could also be uh, requested in the form of an article, potentially at a future, uh, potentially special town meeting to pull from another funding source. Uh, the good thing about an article is the article also allows for uh, spending, uh, I believe it's up to four or five years, so this is not subject to budget cuts every year. This will be an article that would allow members of the RDIC and the community to, to utilize that funding for the purpose that, purposes that they've requested. Um, so in lieu of a, of a tight budget season, looking at the requests and some of the flexibility that we have in the form of an article, and also, uh, it's come to my attention that the submission is also okay with it being an article and it not being included in the budget. Uh, the decision was to uh, to uh, decrease the funding from the seventy thousand to the, the funding that you see in the budget. Is that accurate? Because that's not what Mike Sullivan said when he sat with us. He told us that sure he isn't. needed that seventy thousand dollars, <laughs> otherwise he couldn't market that property. All right. It was going to stop. It was. It, we weren't going to be able to do everything. Go ahead, to me. If I may, I spoke with Mike Sullivan today, and he is in support of either waiting for free cash at special or going before the select board for an ARPA request. Yeah, he did say that when he was here. He did say he would be he would be okay with waiting until October if the override didn't pass. Right. Right. So I understood taking it out of the work in process without the override, but I was shocked to see that it was taken from the two and a half override budget. Yep, I did speak with him about it today, and he's, he's perfectly fine with that. Okay, because we've also been having information hearings. We've posted this budget, and that 70000 was there, and now all of a sudden it's disappeared. So you needed it, now you don't. Right. Yeah, I mean, the problem with taking that out to the to that point of the public aspect, uh, um, on Sunday when we were talking, a lot of the conversation, although somewhat negative, was around what the town is doing to produce more income. And right. this, to me, is one of those items that theoretically does intend to produce income for the town in some way, shape, or form. Um, so to see that come out, the townspeople might say, well, if I'm doing an override, you know, you're not funding the thing that we're kind of saying we need in the town. So I think there might be a, a missed message there. Um, and I know you're saying that we're planning to fund it a different way, but what if there is no other way when we go to plan to fund it? So if we have an opportunity to fund it, why not just fund it? So to be clear, I think the budget was posted also with the caveat that this budget is not finished. This yeah. is a tentative preliminary budget that is working. I think it was the intent of the Finance Committee to post this budget no, in an effort to be transparent, to work, let people know The what's work going in on. process without the override. Right. That was the work in process. The two and a half override budget 
Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. No, I, I thought it was final. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, I thought it was what was going to be on the warrant. So I'm asking all of you guys, because I thought the only work in process was if the override, if the override pass. didn't pass. Correct. That's my understanding. I mean, I've never had a budget that didn't change every day, so I yeah. budgets <laughs> change. I mean, so, I mean, candidly, um, and sorry, sir. Nice to, nice no. to see you. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, we, uh, the, the Rutland Heights property is, is obviously a, a, an incredible opportunity for the property, and I think at some point it will be an incredible asset and hopefully revenue generating. Um, uh, but, of course, in lieu of a tight budget season, I think our town departments take priority. And if we have another funding source um, to be able to support still this request, obviously you can't make everyone happy. Running a town government is not easy, and providing these services is incredibly difficult. I want to make everyone happy. But if we have another funding source, especially if we're able to utilize one-time funding like ARPA, or if we do have a substantial free cash or some other revenue funding sources. And candidly, my thought is, especially when hearing this request, there's a lot of grant opportunities for things like this, site development grants, marketing opportunities for this. So I'd be more than happy, and I look forward to working with uh, RDIC on, on, on uh, fulfilling this request. But in terms of a budget, I understand where the committee is coming from. Um, but we need to keep our town departments open and functioning. And this is one after consultation with the with the with the chair. This is something that we had to make a, a tough budget decision on. So. So how do we communicate that to the voters? Well, once we have a budget finalized, over the next two weeks, we'll be hit the ground, hitting the ground running and doing a lot more what Karen and I did the other day sure. um, to let them know what the budget looks like and the services that are provided. Go ahead, tell me. Okay, so that property, or a, a portion of that property was sold. That money's changed. Am I correct that, that the town has that money now? Okay. But it's not available till it gets. What's the process, Becky? Was it? Has to so it's it's going yeah. into a, a like a special yeah. revenue fund um, is under Mass General Law Chapter Forty Four, Section Sixty Three, <laughs> No Sixty Six. If you want, um, I'll show off. And it can be used She's for a lot. Yeah. to any um, to be spent on any item that you would have borrowed for more than five years, and that's what it can be used for. We're not going. It's not going to fall directly into free cash. It's going to be set aside so that we can use it for capital items, anything that we would borrow money for. No, it can't. That's because of the legislation that was attached to Rutland Heights Hospital. That's well, the sale of property has to go. We've got an opinion from town council, so it's the sale of property funding source. It's chapter. Chapter 44, Section 66, <laughs> um, instead of the regular um, town funds um, chapter 44, Section 53, I think it is, if I'm getting those backwards. But it, though, so this is a special legislative, well, special chapter for sale of property proceeds. For that, and that applies to every town, and that's any property sale? Yes. Excluding tax. Is that sale. something new, or is that something that's been around for a while? I don't know the, the, when it was, but that we got an opinion because we weren't sure how to handle it. We got an opinion from KP Law, and that's the okay. four sales of property. That's <clears throat> what you need to do for it. And that does benefit the town for all the in infrastructure and um, miscellaneous things that are that are coming down the pike that we need to do things for. Oh, no, I'm, um, yeah. We were actually meeting with RDIC and, no, CIPC and the Board of Selectmen on Monday in, all of these funding sources to see what we can do with some of the capital projects that need to be done. This may be a little different than like 30B where you're disposing of uh, kind of like surplus um, you know, vehicles or things like that where that does fall into I believe miscellaneous revenue under local receipts. So that would be a general fund revenue. But, but there's nothing, I'm, well I don't know, I guess we'd have to read that I guess it depends on how the question was asked in town council, too. But it would seem to me there'd be something in there if you want to improve that property or do something to move it, that you would be able to use some of those funds to do, do those things you just said to, to capital items that may take five or more years of loans or whatever. It just, 
That's two different properties now because it's been parceled, right? No, so. no, I understand, but if, if you're saying it can only be used for something that's capital in five years or more alone, that's certainly you're not going to advertise in budgets. It can only be for a year, but well, um, they, I'm just saying uh, it would. Well, okay, it would seem to me there's something that, that, that would let you that. do something to help you improve or do further with that property. I understand you just can't go and spend it on something else. You got to do those capital things, but a lot of times there's ancillary parts that go with the project that you can fund with it. First of all, welcome back, Tom. But thank you. I, I we have been. Uh, I asked Gary. I went to Becky. I asked one of them to ask town council if there was any other way to do it. I understand exactly what you're saying. It. We keep getting the same exact answer you're getting now that I didn't like it then, and I, I can see that you don't like it. I just don't know that. It, I think it's pretty. We sell all that property up there, and we can't use any of the money to help promote that property up there. So it's an unfortunate. But it paid off the rest of our loans. So oh, that absolutely. Helped us. <laughs> so there was benefit to it. <laughs> yeah, but there's still a lot of extra money there that we could use for other purposes. Yeah, but Which we will. We will. Now we'll yeah. just be able to have the money to spend it on some items that we wouldn't be able to fund any other way either. Well, some of our buildings. It, yeah, right, but we can't use it for the 70 grand that we need right now. Right. No. But the, so let's go back to that 70 grand. So when you're looking at the two and a half, Karen mentioned it as well. It, the, the total budget, the revenue still is greater than the expense. Right. So we pulled that seventy grand out. Yep. Are we just leaving it the way it is? So we're going to have one hundred seventy thousand dollars of excess revenue that we're not spending for fiscal year twenty four. Is that the plan? Since yes. no one talked to yeah. us about it, or is the plan? Well, well, it looks like we're just spending less than we're making. Which yeah. Which well, so right. candidly, that that leaves uh, some excess levy capacity for us right. to be able to to so then um, can continue on for a number of years. Yep. That's out of the two and a half budget, not the. No, the uh, without the override, the seventy thousand was taken. But honestly, yeah. it does make more sense to pull it out of our purse. So, so we, through the chair, I mean, not, not all of that would be eligible for ARPA funds. Not any of the revol. You know, they, he wants money to be able to market and stuff like that. The only thing we could do is permanent, like the clearing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, he understands that. I, I mean, I guess my only thing is, is that um, <coughs> we have posted this. It's been on the website now for what, two weeks? Three. Three weeks. Well, that was my question. Why? <coughs> it, it threw the, okay, go ahead. We, three weeks ago, we came up with a two and a half override budget. Yep. It was good then. We posted it everywhere. We may have had some discussions about where we posted it, how we posted sure. it, what website and all that. But now it's changed. Yep. And did, did, I, I saw it. No, I actually had to go through and find where the difference is. So why didn't anybody tell us? I just I just wanted to way out of the finance committee and I was told by one of the two select board chairmen that it's my, why would they need me if I didn't do my job? So I guess I'm asking you, why did you guys do this without telling me? We didn't do anything. They didn't. It we had no discussion whatsoever. So this is the first you heard about it too? Yes, it yep. is. Yep. So I don't know. What, so one of the things I'm confused. I don't know. Um, the first time that the finance committee saw it was when I received it Wednesday afternoon. Becky, do you know when we... And I didn't have the chance to actually go through and look at it until this morning. So obviously there's been a lot of changes over the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm sure when this budget was posted. Um, <laughs> it really is my understanding that because we're, we're still we we're still trying to figure out what these final numbers were, you know, figuring out um, unemployment costs, uh, other uh, costs associated with every department in the services. So. Um, I think it would be unreasonable, especially if we're continuing through this budget season process, it would be unreasonable to expect there to be no changes to this to this budget. We're trying to get as close as we can to a balanced budget for town meeting. And we did have to make some changes. And if they weren't communicated over the past few weeks or if they weren't communic communicated over the past three days, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, we have a meeting tonight to talk about this. We're talking about it. I'm sorry if the board 
uh, was informed of this. I believe we did send the notification to Finance Committee and the Select Board for some other changes. If this wasn't one of them that was reflected in our communications, I apologize. So, Austin, you made a point before about um, needing to put a stake in the ground. If we put a, are we putting a stake in the ground tonight and no more changes from this point forward? That would be my desire. <coughs> well, I'd like I it to be... And not to not to put too fine of a point to it, but what we received from the your office didn't give us any of the differences. We didn't get a list saying we took this, we took this, we changed this, we changed this. Just so you know. Yes, you did. Just call them right here. But not from what was pu what was previously oh, published. About, we like had to actually changes. go through and yeah, we actually had to physically See, somebody audit, had to physically go through and find them. Well, I think the audit trail is important. Yeah. So I think we did. I mean, and again, I I started on Tuesday. So whatever changes were made from a couple of weeks ago to Tuesday, and then from Tuesday, I think Gary right on Tuesday did send uh, a change to um, unemployment and fire department. Is that correct, Gary? Uh, um, a proposed change. A proposed change to uh, fire department and unemployment. Um, so, which we can bring up this evening. Yeah. So we're. I mean, we're here to talk about so the budget. You're saying the last column is what shows those numbers changed. Uh, shows those. That's changed, I believe, from um, from FY twenty three to. Um, if the field override twenty four. Yes, that's the right. that's the yeah. percentage change of if the okay. So we, yes. which yep. column was it that you were just? I'm just curious. I want to know what the, the recommended was. budget fiscal year twenty twenty four. That's highlighted. Okay. That's the one that's highlighted, shaded, so whatever you want to say. Okay. That number changed from the number that was posted on the town website okay. and that we've been speaking on. Okay. And we all, I think, we're all in agreement that we all thought that was the two and a half override budget was final. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll re uh, uh, I don't have a problem. I think I like this format, operational budget detail. I think this would be... Margaret. Margaret did this one. Well, she's not here anymore. No, but that's... Seth found it. <laughs> Margaret Margaret was the one that did it the year that we thought we needed it. Oh, okay. It makes sense. I like mm -hmm. it, too. All right. So I like this. I kind of agree with Pete that maybe we should... Is, is this where we're going to put a stake in the ground? This is where we're at. Um, but I, I think there may be a change here or there. And I'm sorry, Lyndon, that I spoke out of turn because I didn't know you guys didn't know about it either. Um, I'd like to stick a stake in the ground and say this is where we should go. And, and that's it. So if that's in the form of a motion. There's a few other ones that we got to go over ourselves. Really? Mm -hmm. There's more than seven. Mm -hmm. So the question, from from my perspective, the question is going to be is when, when will we be done with this? I'm sort of of the opinion that we should be done now. And we should be working on the stuff to um, present to the town about what the impact of both of these things are going to be. And if something comes in and postage goes up by three cents and so it's going to be a change, it's going to be a change. We're talking about variances from budget as you go down the road. And let's just recognize that's what it's going to be. I don't want to go in. I don't want to have, to, I don't want to be chasing my tail trying to get to a point where I don't have any difference. I mean, we're at $23 difference right now. I don't want to be chasing that down. I don't think it's... Um, I'm not worried about that column. I'm worried about the two and a half override that we've been putting out. We've been doing presentations on. Right. People have printed them. People are looking at them. Right. And now there's changes made. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I mean... I don't want to be chasing down those differences simply because they're differences. Let's accept it. But uh, if you can bring that number down, isn't that better? <clears throat> Not if they're losing what they think they're getting. Right. right. The, the thing is, all we've been hearing is the importance of bringing in industry. And what they're going to hear, what they're going to go back to watch is Mike Sullivan sitting in our meeting saying that without that 70000 they can't market. That means the marketing on the property stops. We won't be able to sell anything. Well, we had to do that because we don't have the money to do it. But in the two do. and a half override, we would have the oh. money. No. Oh. Or through other funding sources, we're able to find the money. Okay. And, and let's hope that we can do that sooner if, than in, later. We will. 
Yeah, but if he is okay with it, that means he won't go and try to ask other money in the town meeting floor, like he has in the past. But anyway, I just want to make a comment on what we just talked about the budget. Yeah. I've never been to a meeting or a budget where we haven't changed numbers right up to the night when we're sitting there trying to get it figured out. Mm-hmm. We've changed numbers. I'm not saying we should, right. and I'm not saying right. it's good, but it happens. I think that And I, all the years I've been doing budgets and go to town meetings, it's happened. I think, it happens more often than not. Excuse yes, me. it does. <laughs> Sorry, I, I think that, I know, I think the point is we just want, we're asking for a $2 million override. Yep. And we want to make sure that the town understands what Correct. they're getting for right. the $2.5 million, and now we're changing our minds. Right. So on the website right now, the posted budget for the two and a half override still has the seventy thousand in, yep. in purchase services. <clears throat> and it's balanced revenues versus expenses, isn't it? Yeah, for the two, the two and a half. Yep. Right. That's the two and a half. So it will be balanced at the two and a half override passing. And I, I I would have to say that I don't. I don't think any amount of money, seventy grand, is going to change anybody's mind on how they're going to vote on this anyway. So, I think people are pretty much knows which way they're going to go. And well, you know, I would hope. I would hope that that's not necessarily the case. I'd hope that we could still sway the people that are against it. I just. I just want to know what those tools would be that would help us sway the those that are against it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the seventy thousand or the or the less than seventy thousand piece is going to make a difference, but I agree. Go ahead, Linda. Uh, Darren, did you watch the last meeting at the library Sunday meeting? Um, no, I get uh, some cliff notes. The majority of the questions were that we weren't doing, doing enough, enough to generate yeah. money and revenue. Yeah. So this whole issue was the major conversation at that. And that's major. no different than the Council on Aging meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was that was the gist of the meeting. So just so you know, that that was all the questions revolved around that we're not doing enough to generate revenue. So yeah. I'm not saying that that seventy thousand is going to make all the difference in the world, but it does make a difference on. But the it impression. won't it might stop make them the from starting to market it, you know, right away. What indicates that we're trying, we're we're putting our foot forward, and we're making an effort to do what they're asking us to do. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think it's important for folks to understand, too, though, that it's not um, something that's going to provide immediate results. I mean, we marketed that parcel for decades, and it only now has just gone through. So if they aren't able to get the 70000 through the override but through other means, um, I don't think that they're, they're going to see the immediate results that they may think they're going to if they, if they get this money. Well, the only thing I would say about that is the fact that once you start building up there, that's the anchor that's going to draw. Mm-hmm. Right, you, you have all those customers that are going to be living right. there, so that's going to yeah. that's going to attract now, more business interest saying, right? because they because they know something's going in there now, and there's going to be all those families sitting there. Yeah, it's use, not tucked away. Could now, use a market. Now, could exactly. use medical, you know, doctors' offices. Could or use whatever. a mini mart. Who knows? It is, it is the time that will probably be the best to market it. Well, I, I do understand that, but I I think that where there's alternate ways for us to get that money and provide the same result. But then we could possibly take that seventy thousand and put it back into departments that are still not where they should be, even with the override. Would that be a better way to get the best of both worlds? The but, other side of the night. But that right. seventy thousand, when you took it out of the two and a half override, <laughs> did that go back to any of the departments? It did not. No, because we needed to talk about it. Right. right. So I mean, that's the thing. Out that's there. A, you know, that's the thing. So it's and the two and a half override. I don't think. With the two and a half override, I thought most of the departments are going back to yeah. where right. or closer to. I, where I think need. the finance committee was pretty clear on we need to know what you want because we need to know is it going to be two million dollars? Is that going to be enough? We need to be um, the people need to know exactly where that money is going. So many opportunities were given to say this is what we need, and those numbers were given. And I know things may have changed, but the opportunity for the departments to say this is what I need to function. Agreed. Um, they were given that opportunity. I think so. it also concerns me that if we're taking that set, because part of the statement we're making with the two and a half is that it brings the departments to where they need to be, not right. where they maybe want to be, right. I get it, but where they need to be. To if we say, oh, sorry, they actually need an additional 70 grand for X, Y, and Z, it really kind of puts a little bit of, well, you know, is this actually what they need? So I, 
it's kind of sending a very mixed message, in my opinion. In uh, my concern layers. is they don't have a lot of confidence in, in the management of the town right now. That came up a lot during our discussions, <laughs> and I tried to defend it and say it's not mismanaged. But we need to be clear and send, uh, like Karen said, we need to send a very clear message that we are managing, the departments were giving opportunities, and that we are doing everything we can to try to look at uh, alternative ways to generate revenue. So, yeah, but like I said, yeah, no. <laughs> if, if you participated in those meetings, I mean, you were there, Gary. Those were those were the main comments. That that was the concern with most of the groups that I sat in with, yeah. in my discussions with. I mean, my only fear is is that we have had it out there for three weeks. A <clears throat> lot of people are looking at it yeah. and now to change it. Go ahead, Carol. Thank you, Karen. Um, I, I guess I would say to Peter's point and other other people's, you know, there's there's the narrative that we're talking about. So it's what we're seeing. The number of people that maybe are scrutinizing this may be less than the number of people that were going to be able to get their ear to have a narrative. And I think having saying, we have a new TA, we've got different people in the room, things shifted. He said, as a new TA, you know, we can look at ARPA funds or we can look at grants. Um, I would suggest being part of the select board, come to us, you know, RGIC, come to us with a marketing plan. Do you need the full 70 on the book right now? Or is 25 or $50,000 going to do for, to get well, the first 40 of the out? 70 is to cut down trees. Yeah. Okay. So to better market the, the property. Trees, you know, for, for, come for, for 40, but and give, but you've got different people in the room at this point that are looking outside of just what can Rutland do through a tax base and, and I think that that is a positive. Um, look, we've got seventy thousand dollars that has maybe not been put to a budget item, and, and this is what we're going to continue to do. We're going to continue to to find ways to be good stewards. And I think it's 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 just how we you know do the narrative part. Um, as a taxpayer, I would say, wow, he's, he's going to save seventy thousand seventy thousand dollars. They just seventy, you know, maybe they can find a little bit more. Um, and I, I think it just shows us being. I, I just, I think, in my and humble we opinion, answered. we've had it out for three weeks. People are looking at it, and now we look like, whoops, whoops, whoops. I, and I, I just think that's, we already have a very steep hill to go up, and we've been in front of people, and I think this is a big one. So my, my concern is they're going to, a lot of people are going to say, well, why shouldn't the override be $70,000 less? Right. Mm -hmm. And they're all, and the other thing is like, right. there are opportunities. We may use ARPA funds. There may be, there are grants available that I've told them about for 20 years that they've never taken advantage of. Sure. But, so we can still do that. And if that money isn't spent, then why can't you transfer it into other areas that are needed? Mm -hmm. So right. if we have the ability to find that money, then we won't spend that money, right? And then we'll be able to transfer it in, in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, I am really concerned with the meetings that I've gone to at the library that the, these are huge issues about transparency, <coughs> the management of the town, and a, about revenue generation, thinking that we are not doing enough at all. Those are, those are all the main questions. Those are the, the, the main part of all the discussions. So that's, that's my main concern. So I don't disagree that... Maybe that there's a need for the shift for that, but hopefully we can get that money and shift it. But we don't want to send a negative message that is going to kill our opportunities to, to get an override, in my opinion. You also changed the Board of Assessors salary. That was for the stipends that you had accidentally taken out. Mm -hmm. And that's $1,500. I think that was a little bit easier. We forgot. We made an oops. You know, it's fifteen hundred dollars. I, you know, but I just, I was a little shocked that there were changes to the two and a half override today. I was a little surprised. So that was a plus back in the fifteen hundred. I mean, override. Could we do that? So twenty five. In the override, we forgot to take them out the first time. Gary no. took them out accidentally so when he was doing the numbers. And we can't take the expenses. It's a two and a half, it's so they should be in there. Override, so they okay. should have them in there. I see. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess I can't answer that. Thank you. That's revenue minus expenses. Everybody else is getting them. We should be making sure that they get them. Yep. Um, um, 
And then there was a small error in the vocational assessment. That's fine. We wanted to get that Three, to the right one. Right. That was a transfer. No, yep, right. exactly. That's that's an easy one to do. Um, that number's higher than that number. And then the health insurance. So the 978-295-04 is the appropriate amount. That's not going to change. You're 100% sure. <laughs> I didn't even know the phone and does that include one extra family person? I can't get it to go down. So that was, we knew that. Okay. Two million. So, so that, um, the only question, um, or somebody wants to make a motion about the 70,000. Um, I was ready to until we heard about special law 7298561. That's the number one question the minute that closed that she got, you know, 50 people waiting at the door asking what can we spend the money on. So is that are we just doing this one change? Do we have other changes that should be? There's quick? the fifteen hundred dollars for the stipends. That was an oops. There was a transposition error for the uh, Bay Path vocational. Okay. There was the change in the health insurance and a change in the liability insurance. All right. So I would make a motion that we accept the changes made to the budget and um, present that. That includes that. taking the $70,000 out of our DIC. That would be in taking the $70,000 out. No second. Any discussion? I think we should leave it in. Okay. I'm in agreement on that one. Yeah. I just think the, the conversations, especially the one I was at, was far too geared towards what are you guys doing to make this time. And, and yes, it may not come in the next 10 years, but if we're not showing we're not doing anything, I think that that's just a negative message. And, and I get it. 100% on the same page as Lennon. If we can get the money somewhere else, great. We won't use this money. It'll hit another department or free cash or whatever. But um, it's too important at this point to leave. And I know it's small dollars, but. So I guess my only comment would be <coughs> is that um, the last two or maybe three town meetings that um, I was in, the conversation was, don't worry about it. They will find the money. That was the, the uh, conversation from the floor. <clears throat> There's a credibility issue there as to what, what we would be doing, what the town would do. They don't have to vote for things because they will find the money. I, I think if it's, if it's not needed, we take it out. If it's needed, we leave it in. I, I just, I think we're risking credibility. That's all, it's my comments. Might we're, also, be. we're also risking two and a half override. Well, that could. Be. I, I I think I think changing it this late is hurting our credibility more than anything else. I just I, because like, we've had so many people ask. I mean, there were fifty people at Council on Aging, and that was what are we doing to get more revenue into town? Yeah. And. Yeah, but that's that seventy thousand won't necessarily guarantee to to uh, to Mika's point. It's not going to guarantee that you're right. But at least we're marketing it. At least we're moving forward. It shows we're trying. We're not just right. treading water, going don't worry, we'll come can, along. Can I pull along. my we second? A, we have, <laughs> no, we have a, someone from the RDIC. Yep. No, I'm not RDIC. No, I, I was not. pulled from that committee. <laughs> no, he's on um, HPDD. HPDD. <laughs> um, I just want to make a comment about the seventy thousand dollars about the whole Rutland Heights. Mm -hmm. um, the legislation that was put forth for Rutland Heights was done for a purpose. And it was done for the purpose of so that they wouldn't take that property and just rip all the money out of it and spend it for trucks and everything else. That entity was owned by the RDIC for the town, but not the town. So there is no other state thing that's been sold that is like this. That's why I question the ability of what this money really means. Because, again, that money was supposed to be used to pay down the debt. All right, that we used to pay for, and then it was to do other things. You know, like again, you look at the master plan, it's recreation, it's whatever. You know, we've got nothing up there for recreation. All right, and again, what we were looking to do, and, and my hope, all right, was once we got that top of the hill sold, we got that 1.46, whatever it is, now we sit there and say, let's do something for the, 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 uh, 
um, the fields. I mean, I look out my window every day and I say ball field right there or tennis court. I mean, if you ever lived in here when the federal government owned it, I mean, they had a golf club, they had tennis courts, they had basketball courts, they had everything there. All right. And we're only hearing from, again, my grandchildren and that level that there's no place to play soccer. There's no place to play Little League. Uh, there's no place to do this. There's no place to do that. So, again, when we're just saying we're going to take that money, put it forth and then kind of tie it into something else. Or when we get the, the money, the free cash will go in and we can maybe buy something else or whatever. It's just, I don't know, it's just the amount of effort that went into that whole RDIC, although it was a long period of time that we spent on that. And, and we got the culmination. I mean, we had everything up there. Um, and we came down, which I think to a pretty good, pretty good level, but to, just to say we're gonna take that money. And, and, and I'm gonna just also say, I don't see, I don't want 70,000 in a budget, okay? I agree with whoever said it that you want an article. So we got that 70 grand, all right? Come in the fall or whatever, I would think that that free cash that's generated by that sale, some of that money should, could be put into an article that would give the RD some money to, you know, again, mowing. We got people volunteering when they're mowing up there, or they're doing this, they're doing that. Um, I just think we need to have it so we're trying to manage that, that facility uh, and, and go forward. But uh, um, that's my two cents worth on, on the RDIC. And I just want to make one comment too, is we're talking about what the general public hears. And again, I just hear things. Um, but when you look at the thing that you sent out, all right, which puts summaries on what it is. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I look at it is, there's like seven new jobs you're gonna hire. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're doubling salaries. Uh, you know, and you wanna override? I've gotta have, pro I have problems going to the, I might be personally, but I have problems going to get my groceries, <laughs> and yet we're gonna hire seven new people, we're doubling salaries, that, and, or, or they're threatening to not plow our street? We're not doubling salaries. That you are. was that was no no. That you are. was something that was brought up at the council. Council on aging. We are not doubling. What are you doing? She's twenty three and sixteen, and so we're not doubling. She works. We pay her currently twenty three hours, and we're going to make her forty hours. So that's not doubling. Well, that's the just salary line item is being doubled. It's just right. shy. Right. And yet yes. we're cutting other salary items. And the other question. No, in the two and a half override, we are not cutting anybody's salaries. Well, the other thing that came up during our discussion, a lot of those positions of ones that were been vacant for years. I don't think they're new. vacant. They're not there. Mm -hmm. All right, so I look at it and say, I'll give you the exact same money you have this year for next year. You can't. You're taking a cut. If you do that, you're going to cut. You, you're going to get rid of it. I, I believe me. I understand. But all I'm saying is when you're looking at the budget, all right, are we $2 million off? That we've got to add $2 million to this year's budget in order to, and again, that's $2 million budget over and above the new growth and, and all the two and a half override and all that other stuff. It's just a lot of money that's being spent out there, and it just doesn't, I don't get a real strong sense of this is what we need, so that's why we need $2 million. I just don't think the two, and a half, two million will pass. So you don't think that, that we are, um, we have fully explained the need for the override? I don't believe that there is subsequent information out there to support a two and a half override. Okay, that's a fair point. Whether it's just put forward the wrong way or whatever, well, you're just looking at it, you're sitting there saying, it's just, it's just not gonna happen. Because you know you're gonna pay the schools. The school isn't even an issue. You're automatically, the school's gone. All right, so Not now necessarily. You're saying, we can't affect the operations assessment. But it never happens. You can't. You're going to have. They're going to vote it, and it's going to go in. We can. Whether or not we will be successful, we can affect the right, operations. But you're going to have another pass. person to go with. I you. understand that, but I'm saying we can. My In my 30 successful. years, we've never had that other guy to go with us. Yeah, we have. We did it once. Yeah. Or twice. My, actually, that my question was: on, uh, Do we have a final number on the transportation? Do we have a final figure on that? Because weren't we supposed to get 100%? Didn't that, didn't we, that word came out with that, that Ian Gobi had like got 100% transportation? No? I think that would have been top notch on every I think message. I thought it went back to 52. I was like, I thought we did pretty good that we went, that. it was a little I bit saw higher. She had it on yeah. Facebook that she got that. May I just make one more point on the RDIC money? Um, kind of to Doug's point and to, to Austin's point. 
with the article, it allows that money to sit there in the budget. If they don't spend that money in FY24, it's going to fall to free cash anyways. So unless they're going to be able to, to use that full amount, um, then they're really not going to benefit from the intentions of what they want to use that money for, which is long-term expenses related to marketing the property. Well, no, 40 of it was for clearing the property. So that That's they what will. he estimated, but he doesn't have a quote yet. For but he said either, 40 grand so. was for clearing the property so that it would look more pretty and we can see the pond and all that kind of stuff. So and could we move the 70 from the operating budget to a article from, could we just do that? Does it change the, the overall budget? I don't think we it can't does. change it to an article because it's already finalized. So that's why we were suggesting come back to a future town meeting, a fall town meeting, where we have a better picture of some other funding sources, whether it's 70000 from an article or 70000 Congratulations, we've got a mass development grant. The point is we've got this money, and if we can pull it from another funding source or pull it from an article, this gives us a little bit more time to coordinate. I love the idea of a of a marketing plan that Carol had mentioned. Um, you know, candidly, we, I, I haven't seen anything yet, or I haven't had the conversations yet about um, what is needed. Obviously, uh, with that kind of money, we need to talk about procurement um, and, and, and bidding and that point and everything else that's associated with this type of money. It's over, it's, it's 70,000, so you're, you're talking some, you know, for something like that, you, you have to go out to bid for some, some of the work, so. Um, Essentially, this is just asking, I think, um, for a little bit more time to be able to come up with a plan and, and work with the uh, RDIC to, to fulfill this request. So if we put it in the budget now, and then they didn't use it as of October, can it be moved to an article in October? God, government sucks. <laughs> it's so freaking complicated. No, we, can, we could put an article in in November, and then use interdepartmental transfers for that 70. Yeah, the town meeting could vote to take that money and, and, and reallocate. You know, through an article, you'd have to have the town no, meeting. No, we would vote. take, if, if there was money available, whether it be free cash or uh, the only way we'd be using it for an article would be free cash. If it's ARPA funds, it's, it's by the select board. Oh, no, no, no I, no, I so, understand. And then I'm trying to have, answer what he. If what, we had the 70000 if that all happens or we get it in a grant, mm -hmm. then we can use that seventy. At the end of next year, what is it, beginning of May, we can start doing interdepartmental transfers? There was many years you helped, uh, you had extra funds and you helped uh, pay for overages and other departments. And so that could be the same thing. If I could, just devil's advocate, then, then aren't we doing exactly what I was saying we do now, which is reallocate it to other departments, because that feels disingenuous now. We're trying to sell this as we're helping the RDIC to market it, but then they don't end up using the money. So now we're just giving it back to other departments. We I could guarantee have just done that now. he will find somebody to cut those trees this summer. What about the other 30000 If we don't spend it by end of FY24, now we're just going to give it to other departments anyways or allow it to fall to free cash i'm just it well it would just be yeah. you know yeah it would we could we could then do interdepartmental transfers for overages and whatnot if that happens but i think if we that's not what the voters so, voted yeah. for at that point I don't think the seventy thousand dollars is going to make or break this two and a half over right either way no, no, i don't think it will I either think we, i i agree that we need to the departments need money but if we start reallocating that now could, what I said through on but Sunday. Half override where we, the departments already have their money. I, well, yeah. I have my question is, yeah. Austin, could you clarify if we take it out of that? What was your plan to where were we going to put the seventy grand? So, the, so the seventy thousand. Um, so essentially, we're reducing the overall budget by seventy thousand. Okay. Among the other changes as well. Um, but if it was just that we reduced the budget by seventy thousand, that leaves about one hundred seventy thousand in uh, excess levy capacity. Which um, right now we have, I believe, zero excess levy capacity. So this allows us, as we talk about uh, fiscal year twenty five, we, we we've got a little bit of money that we can. Um, but you weren't going to put it into another budget line. Nope, no, there's no plan to do that. Okay, okay. all right. Yeah. So it's a little different. So this, okay. I mean, so the, the two million does... Two and a half override, they're already made pretty much whole, the department. We haven't cut it. I, I understand that, but I, I guess where I'm going with this 
it, if that's the way we get to think of it that way, it's mm-hmm. going to move it forward if we're not going to use it. And if yeah. and if the RDIC is okay with that, because I, I, I'm not on the RDIC, I don't have a problem. Do with you have Mike's phone number? Is he on vacation still? Mm-hmm. Is he home? What was the no, answer to that? He's on vacation, vacation or you have the number? <laughs> Both. Oh, okay. um, but I did talk to him too. I have about his number, it. but I didn't know he's on vacation. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't want to bother him because otherwise I'd pick up the phone and call him. Uh, pretend it's a sale. Yeah. <laughs> so two million I puts us ahead. One hundred seventy thousand dollars ahead of the game as well for fiscal year twenty five. Let's hope for some good news for new growth. Let's hope for some good news in local receipts um, from a revenue perspective. Uh, so as we start to plan for what next year costs like. Um, I, I don't want to do this again in terms of asking for an override again. Obviously, the work that Alex has done, this district carries for uh, for a little while now. Uh, so this is um, yeah. well, get ready because it's been going on since 1998 yeah. and 1999. The same thing every year. Yeah. So I think you know, in terms of also the budget process, we're going to start next year's budget process hopefully even earlier to have these conversations. That's something else we've been trying to do for the last yep. I don't know how many years. Yeah. Well, I'm going to commit to doing that. That's good. Um, That's and I awesome. Work, and I want to work with all of you. So, um, you know, we're going to obviously look very closely at revenues for next year. The fact is, this does give us a little bit of a cushion to be able to start planning for next year. And again, as as we work to kind of look at a revenue perspective, and then we, you know, uh, start telling the community what the cost of services are, um, you know, this is something that allows us to have a little bit of flexibility uh, rather than already being on a tight constraint for next year. So, so it would be 145 with it and 215 without it. Extra. Yeah, I think I have the wrong. Becky, do you have the most recent one? I printed the wrong one. The one I have 171. Yeah. 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 We just go to the bottom line. Oh, yeah. I love it. See, it's the access. Yeah. One seventy one. Right. So I don't know. Gary, do you have, or Becky, This does this include the proposed changes to the um, fire? Yeah, you said it because the, you guys put it together yesterday. I wasn't here, so I believe I was told that was included. Okay. That's correct? Yes. Set again. Presented this. Presented okay. This is exactly what was, he got it from the other. But that's not on the two and a half override side. That's on the other side. I think it was on both, right? We carried it through? No, because we're not laying off that firefighter in the two and a half override. Okay. We're only laying him off in the work in process. Over, okay. Override mm-hmm. fails budget. Okay. Tommy. Tommy. Give me a piece of that gun, please. Awesome. Okay. So... Uh, my rough calculations at this is two percent of the override. I don't care what we do. Um, we just have to come up with a. We have to take a vote here, guys, and figure out which way we want to go. I and I don't think that. She withdrew her second. Then Pete has to withdraw. So if without the second, the motion will fail. No. Yeah. The mo- there's no motion to fail. No, I made the else, motion. No, because somebody else could second it. So mm-hmm. unless you would like to withdraw your, your no, no, motion. No, I made the motion that we take all of the, do Adjust. make the adjustments as document. Yeah. And Lynn right. seconded that motion. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you said, we can't discuss it unless we have a motion on the floor. So I made the motion. Right, so she withdrew her motion. But that right, she made a second. second. But she withdrew it. Off the no, 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 I understand that. But if, but if there's no second, Oh shit, second. It doesn't go anywhere. It just sits there. Okay. A second. That's that's my point. It just sort of dies. Right. Yeah. Then, okay. then she okay. says there's no second, so oh, we're good. We're good. Back on course. Alex, Alex second. Okay. okay. We're back on course. Talk again. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? It's true. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait a minute. Can we do it? If she call? just withdrew. I, no, no, Alex, wait a second. 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 Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Alex. Yeah. To do if it's a reduction. The adjustments. The adjustments. They're not all reductions. They're adjustments. Someone just clarify what we're holding on. We're voting on the fact that we're adding $1,500 to the board. Of, they have added $1,500 to the board of assessors, which is to cover the stipends that we're on just the two and a half. Now. On just the two and a half. This yep. is just the two and a half side. It's the change in the health insurance, 
the change Wait, in. What is it? What is the, the one of those amounts? It's now 978 29504, which I can't tell you what it was without going back. Well, that's right. It was, it was 998. That's yeah. what, was, what was requested before I had, before we needed to. And the then the 22809 is a liability insurance. And that's because the premium came down. Yep. In the Bay Path? And the Bay Path was, it's uh, 2442 versus. It was like a $200. Yeah, it was nothing. That was a transposition error, so that's, and then the 70000 Yeah, but they just want to know what the changes were. So bottom line with those changes. Yes, yeah. so I think. Everybody clear? Clear. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. There we go. Dude, that was what, six to one? Yeah. I only voted because you convinced me of those conversations, Jan. I read all the emails, but. It's funny because the conversations were kind of the opposite of that. But. You know, I, I'm going by what you think is. Oh, so it's all about you, Alex. Yeah, if it's so not right, it's your fault. Would you, in general, with the committee is saying? It's all about you, Alex. Ah, that's a, that's a, that's a, good to know. Okay, I'll have you bring up the um, fire department. And I will have Gary speak to that, please. Okay. Yeah, it was because, as London has said, Karen, you certainly agreed, and everybody has. It. Not only are folks screaming out there for marketability of the town, but they're also screaming about um, deficiencies in public safety. Uh, even last week when you were there, um, you guys heard everybody said public safety, we got to have public safety, we need them. They're against having state police coming into patrol, but that's on the police side, I get it. So my, my uh, proposal, um, Karen, and to the rest of the uh, committee, um, was rather than lay off a full-time firefighter, um, keep him at the cost of $58,000, Take that fifty-eight thousand out of trust, which is at roughly one nineteen now. When it originally started way back when at seven, so take it out of there and you. So it's a net loss of twenty-eight because you will no longer have to pay the thirty thousand dollars for unemployment. That's a proposal. Okay, but if we if we put the fifty-eight in, and we take the fifty-eight out of trust, which is unemployment, let's just call it what that is. Yeah, it's unemployment. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. But it's thirty thousand dollars a person. Correct. <clears throat> so that means we're taking out twenty-eight thousand dollars more. That's what I said. That loss is twenty-eight. That loss is twenty-eight. Right. That we're hoping no one's going to take us up on that to take unemployment when we lay him off or cut him. And that's if the override fails. Yes. Correct. I mean, because in all honesty, I would say to every one of the employees, if it doesn't pass, I would say go and get unemployment. Because oh, you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the unemployed part-time unemployees have full-time employment elsewhere. I don't know. I, I can't even begin to answer that question. Right. If they're going to fire. But I mean, cutting, cutting the people that we unfortunately are cutting, they have the right to go in and say, "My pay was cut in half," and, and get that. They do. They so. Don't. So we're basically what you're suggesting is to to. Take a gamble on unemployment not being funded enough for what the cuts would be. Jesus, I think we're making a gamble on a lot of stuff here. Well, no. I yeah, think we're we planning gotta, as best we can. We're, we're taking a gamble that the, uh, the rainwater, the drinking, isn't going to, with the sweeping that can't be done, isn't going to come back and bite us because the federal government comes in or the, the, or the ADA stuff. I mean, all of that stuff, they're all risks. We take risks on all of this stuff. Let's hope that it doesn't happen. Okay. I, okay. I, I was looking at, can we talk about something else? Mm -hmm. Do we? Should we be making a motion on this specific 
We don't have to. These are all just things that are out there right now because okay. it's not in the numbers that we currently have. Okay. Oh, that's um, the, the balanced budget. Mm -hmm. um, you mean the, the cuts right? budget? Yeah. Has health insurance at the same amount as the override. If we're laying people off, we're not paying health insurance for people. That's a very good point. We have like, that's going to be a couple hundred thousand dollars right there. I know you like men, a lot of times you have to pay a certain amount of health insurance and things like that, but I'm assuming there's a huge discount there that we're not we haven't taken into account. Same with probably county retirement contribution, but maybe no, not. No, that's no, that doesn't change. Damn it. The um, <laughs> health insurance. Sorry. The, the, Don't there wasn't that. many. I cut it in <laughs> half for you. We know exactly how many full time people that are benefit eligible that are. That are I guess I could run the numbers again, but, but right, they were right. I mean, it's gonna. I I would say that it would it would balance our budget if nothing else, and probably leave us with some sort of positive amount. It can't be the same. It can't be the same. There's no way it can be the same. There has to be at least one full time person that's being planned to lay off in that budget. I shouldn't say being planned to be in the balanced budget with cuts. And so where we, we're we, cutting people to half time, they don't qualify. Correct. So uh, just to make sure that I understood uh, Alex's comment about it, it helps us balance the budget. What it would do is we would take, if that money comes out of that line, if it doesn't go back in any way, the budget comes down. We're not balancing the budget. Now we're making... Well, no. Gary has just said that he that we're basically taking twenty eight thousand dollars on out of unemployment that could potentially overspend unemployment. So if we put that twenty eight thousand back from the health insurance line, we would be balanced again. Right. And I understand that, but what your comment was that it was a larger number than the twenty eight thousand. Could be. Okay. I have no idea what it is. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> But it could be also be a person that's not taking health insurance in the town. Could be. True. Could be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I don't it's know how many. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. That's what I'm just actually, trying to make up. It's, it's not a gamble. gamble. We could actually figure that out pretty easily, folks. <laughs> well, I couldn't, but it could be figured out within the administration. Um, I Do we have a number of people on that budget? Do we know the number of people that are being reduced from full-time to either part-time, ineligible, or... Um, Eliminated. That's that's how I calculated the unemployment estimate that I have. So I I could go through and. So you have a number of heads. What is that number of heads? Do we know? FTEs. FTEs. Well. Well, no, I don't know. It wouldn't be. I don't have a total on my oh, yeah, would. <laughs> Do we have a rough estimate? Like, are we talking two, five, ten, fifty? Obviously, it's not fifty. We don't have that many people in the government. No. Yeah. yeah. So then, I don't know. Like Twelve. It's got to be. Is it thundering out? It's going to be like your house in a couple of years. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> She's already doing it. I was step dancing. <laughs> Storm clouds accumulating up there. <laughs> Should we call it 12? Oh, Initially, the number, the, the very, one of the very first budget that was 10, so that was the $300,000, but it's not 10 now, I think. I think, it, I believe I it's think seven, well, seven with the eight. unemployment, like seven, seven or eight, that would go to under 19, so they would not be benefit, benefit eligible. So I, I would guess that, let's say half of those people do not take benefits, because, you know, that's generally what you have is about 50%, so... I don't know what and they. And then, if they're they, individual versus family, you get. Right. But there's at least yeah. at least thirty thousand dollars there that we can balance this back to. So, mm -hmm. I think we are in a safe place if we put that firefighter position back in the budget. Um, and I think that if we could get a more exact number on that, I think that's that would be very beneficial to. Um, it, obviously, we're not really get exact number on that, but if we could come closer on that, and then maybe get a recommendation from. Um, town administrator's office of where they would put that money back into the budget to uh, hopefully help a little bit. That this could be a positive step. Obviously, that's not where we want to go anyway, but nope. <coughs> it makes the, the doom look less doomy. But then the thing is you put it back in the into a person and you increase your health insurance again. Sure. sure. I have another question. Looking at line 210, 
my sheet must have a uh, my sheet must be printed wrong because that's a zero percent drop in the zero percent loss. Um, is something going on there? Because everybody else is taking a pretty good hit. That would be the police department. There's the police department. But they don't have a significant, they don't have a drop in their budget. They did. We've actually, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, whenever we went back over that, um, we initially, we had a meeting with you guys. We took some out. Um, then we, again, didn't want to lose a full-time police officer. We didn't want to lose the possibility of, or suggestion that we would lose any um, donation, if you will, charity from, from Devereaux. We certainly did not want to... Um, you have a, a brand new cruiser repossessed, and I lose that twenty thousand dollars, and um, and we didn't have like the fire didn't say we didn't want state police to come in and, and patrol the town. Looks like the numbers were just reallocated. No, because it's comparing FY twenty three to the far right column, which is a thousand dollars less, not even actually. So Austin, I guess sixty seven. Austin, I guess I have a question about that. That so you know my concern. I don't understand how it can. Everybody else is taking cuts, and that's still a zero. And I, I understand what Gary's saying. Um, are any of the union negotiated contracts based on scheduled hours of work that we can't change, Gary, without going back to renegotiations? Like I've heard that, look, for instance, the fire department is going to say that we're not going to be able to have coverage on Saturdays. Generally speaking, in all union contracts, Darren, it's a management right issue. You can change the schedule of some to, to fill all. Generally speaking, it's a man management issue. I had a call from a taxpayer in town that said, so we have full timers around the clock. And we're, how can we lose a Saturday because of the override? So I don't know if we have to look at that because that was a concern and it may come up at the town meeting. With adding the $58,000 for that firefighter, we would not lose Saturday ambulance funds. Is it, are you, that's 100% fact. Um, if you if you shake your head yes, I'll agree with you. <laughs> I have to read it through to make sure, but that's what I believe we were told. Shake your head yes. Yeah. When did that come? Um, it didn't go out because it was for tonight's discussion, and we have to be careful as to not have problems. As folks are asking that public safety not be effective as it is, I am asking that fifty thousand dollars be added to the wage line. Uh, two three one fifty one twenty. If we do this, it will mean we can save a firefighter from being laid off, and we can save the money uh, in the trust. Um, so I guess it the, doesn't say it here. I think I asked that question offline. And so I, I guess the question ready. where I'm going. I long way around to get to that question. So if we keep the fifty thousand. Are we still going to have Saturday coverage on the ambulance? That was the question. I think the big deal for the big That's issue for Saturday coverage, Dan, was the ambulance, actually. Yeah, it's just ambulance that was No, not. but so the ambulance will still be coming out That's what on saying. Saturdays That's what if we do this 50000 Yeah, because you'll have an extra employee now. Yes. Okay, so we have to have that answer ready on tell me. There's going to be people that ask that question. There already That's is. A, You're saying there already There already is. are, but there's... That's a nobody wants to hear that they're going to lose ambulance. Sir. The only no. problem with that is we're 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 providing a fight and a reason for not passing the override now. Just so everyone we're understands. Not, no, no, no. We still want the override to pass. No, but, but I'm saying one of the things that we were kind of saying is a problem is we aren't going to have Saturday ambulance services, and now that's no longer one of the things that we're losing. Just FYI. One of the. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, good thing. No. Just put it out there. Put it out there. <laughs> it should stay in. I don't disagree because that's not something. Even if we this the override fails, we should not be losing ambulance services ever. So right. I, I don't disagree with it. I just statement. I think that there would be public outcry if if we didn't have an ambulance service up there on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and we got to 
we got to be able to fund this so it works. Yep. Right? And if, if there's no ambulance on a Saturday and Mrs. Mary Smith can't get an ambulance, but there's full-time staff all the way around the thing, we've got to be able to do that. So I would be, well, the long story short is I'm in favor of doing whatever we got to do to make this Saturday thing happen. I think the person who just came into the room could answer that question probably pretty well. <laughs> Seth, by putting that extra firefighter in yes. for the 58, yeah. That would mean we would have Saturday coverage for the ambulance. You would have Saturday coverage for the ambulance, correct? Okay. It's all well, I think I asked that question. I didn't want to say until we were that, ready. I said shake your head. <laughs> yes, I like, and I'll I'm ninety-eight percent sure, but I wanted to. You got the nod. Yeah. Okay. I'll nod. Thank you. Okay. Ask one question. Yep. Does that also include the thirty-five thousand for overtime that's in that ambulance? So you got fifty plus thirty-five. Eighty-five thousand dollars. No overtime and fire. Thirty-five to one hundred. I didn't put. Sorry. When you did the spreadsheet yesterday, did you add overtime money in for the additional firefighter ambulance? No, there's not enough overtime money to backfill. Yeah. Yeah. Probably anyway. Right. So I just I just had a hundred thousand dollars for for overtime. And then one other last question. Are you looking? Is that police? No, it's not ambulance. 231. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I was looking at fire. You were saying if you lost that one guy, you'd lose ambulance coverage. You needed 50. Well, there's 50 in the wages, and there's also another 35 in the overtime. There's 50 in the wages. There's 50 in the wages. And the other question I have is, what are the wages in the emergency management that went from 1,500 to 105,000? That's the new deputy chief. Now is that is that being uh, really up you know transparent where you got wages on emergency and you don't say that that's actually an additional uh, lieutenant? It's a deputy it chief, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. does. Well, but I'm just saying I'm looking at the budget and it just says wages, um, 105,000. I can say that one of the things that was asked at the Council on Aging was succession planning for some of our employees that are getting to the point where they might be looking to greener pastures. And this would help assess someday when. So you promote them so they don't move on? No, we're or trying to get. So they get a good retirement. We're trying to make sure that. I'm going to be retiring. When, oh, okay. you know, we have people that are going to leave because they're going to retire. People do do that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we'd like to have somebody who can step in and do the job, not just come in and end up bathed yeah, in fire like somebody we know. That happens in all the departments, too. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It is in the uh, that one summary sheet of, it says, uh, Public Safety New Deputy Fire Chief. Right. Uh, that's what I'm pointing out is the fact that you got all these new jobs coming in, and you say you got to have them, and I, I don't know. I just I don't see it. I don't see it happening. One of the other comments that was made at the Council on Aging on Tuesday was, we're very lucky we have a lot of department heads who volunteer and fill in holes that they're not getting paid for. And when those department heads, department people leave, the new people probably aren't going to be as apt to step up and volunteer. And we will find a lot of the holes more so when those people leave. Because we have a lot of dedicated people who volunteer to complete their job. Or those current people decide to stop spending so much of their free time right. helping us. Either way. Right. Either way. It will fall out. And it's, it's trying to get us to the point where they're not volunteering for their jobs. Yeah. I mean, I think the one comment I would make is helping us or just getting the work done. I mean, there's a lot of work to do. They're, you know, they're taking care of the responsibilities that they have for, for each of their offices, whether it's the library, treasure collector, um, all town departments are, are um, at max capacity. This is one of the leanest town governments I've seen ever. Um, so this is restoring, our, our current fire chief was the deputy fire chief before. Um, so this is not a new position, this is restoring a cup position from the past, is that correct? Correct. Um, so some of these, as was mentioned earlier, is, is restoring some of the things that were cut, cut, cut over the years. So we're just trying to get back to uh, service levels and staffing levels to provide the services that the residents expect, want, and deserve. 
somebody did bring that up on Sunday to say that we're putting this in as it's called, we're calling it a new position, which is, it is true because it's new over prior year, but to call it new makes it sound like we're adding a lot of things Correct. that were no, that were not there. Whereas really it's, um, refunding, restoring. restoring, restoring, however you want to call it. And we might want to change the wording on that. I'm not sure restoring is the best word because it's long. Um, so we can find a shorter word. Um, but that, that, that's probably a better word to have in that document um, than new position because it. Well, you're filling vacancies, vacancies that have been kept vacant for many years. Years and years and years and years. Yeah, yeah but filling a <laughs> that well, would indicate we've eroded a, services right. slowly over a period <laughs> right. of a decade or more, and we are restoring them relatively quickly. But Hopefully, so if we pass it. So that's the risk <clears throat> is that. Folks in the meeting, mm -hmm. folks at the ballot are going to be looking at it and they're going to be saying, just as he's saying, you're adding people. It, we are, we are, when we asked, when the town administrator asked for the budget, we, he said, we agreed that they would look at what's required to do their job. Now, to do their job, there's a bunch of things out there that they would need, resources, and people are one of them. So we're going to be putting back in the resources to do the job. If we don't have a fire truck to run a fire, to go out to a fire, we're going to get another fire truck. Same thing with, uh, with people. If we don't have the people, then we're going to have to put them back in. So I understand that it's look, it, uh, the, the uh, appearances that we're making, we're adding people, that we're just in a tough time and we're adding like crazy. But the fact of the matter is we're looking to be able to do the job. Um, assist the people that are trying to do the job to do the job. That's where we are. I make a motion that we make the uh, adjustment on the uh, firefighter and cover the difference in the twenty eight thousand from from the health insurance. Yeah, but what's that line that it's that it's. Uh, the health insurance line. Yeah, but where 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 were we originally taking that? We were going to take well take thirty thousand dollars out of trust. Employment trust. Thank you. And then the other twenty eight will come from health insurance. Health insurance. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> okay. So, can we go back to what Darren asked? How are we going to explain the fact that police was cut to zero and we cut DPW to one person? I, I thought that I heard uh, the town administrator say that he'll look into the, that subject and figure it out. Is that what you said? I'm sorry. I might have ignored <laughs> it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> no, I, no I, would, I, would, I would hope that I knew the town administrator will kind of, as he gets his feet underneath him, try to figure that out. He didn't say that, I did. Oh, okay, because I was like, cheapers, if I, I was like, I thought I was listening to you. I, I, I'm hoping that we don't have to. I mean, because at this point, that sticks out when you see all of the major cuts everywhere else. That's a big one. Yeah. And that's one of the big five departments. And people have noticed it. So I, I guess I'm sorry. Uh, what are we asking? I thought Gary well, this number pretty good. That's right here. So here's yeah, what cut, the proposed police DPW budget is. Right. No, is I, what it was I understand what you're saying. Right? Okay. So there's no change. Which, he okay. went, he went, went down the list and explained what negative was 12, what? Negative, the big ones. Obviously, okay. These small ones are. So what we're what uh, so that the the question is Darren's question is if there is that discrepancy, then there's something wrong with. The two and a half budget? No. The no, balance no, budget. budget. The cut the cut budget. budget. It's only the cut. Okay. It's only if the override fails. Okay. It's just, we, and we're going to have, if the override fails, we're going to have a, a couple of months to deal with this problem. But it's something that we should just make sure we have a good answer on. Okay. okay. Right, not something we need to answer tonight, but something yeah. that just something we, we could ask people think to look about. into. Right. That's all. Okay. So there goes your, we're going to have a set budget tonight. Well. Sir. <laughs> well, 
We're asking him to look into it. It doesn't no, mean that no, no, it I will agree. change. So. But no, but he he's wanted a set yeah. budget tonight, so that's unfortunately it's so. right the override. Hmm? We have the override budget. We do. We have the override budget. Right. 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 We don't have the cuts budget. Which is, uh, to be fair, that's the I think budget it was going the, the, the decision that was made. That's the only budget that's going yep. to the floor. Right. So we do. We, we got, got the, we budget. the budget. We mm-hmm. got the budget. Uh, Karen, Joe has a question. Or has oh, sorry, Joe. You could go forward. I wouldn't phrase it as cutting DPW to one person. I think I would phrase it as cutting the equivalent of three people out of DPW. You're going to cut two full-time laborers, mm-hmm. one part-time mechanic, and most of the, and three, half the foreman's time, as well as some of the director's time. Mm-hmm. So the equivalent loss in DPW is more like three people. Well, not just say cut it, cut to one. You've lost three staff. I, but I think she mm-hmm. meant to say we've cut it down to one. Not no, yeah. Right. I don't. I appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. You'd rather go the other way at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, because it could have had two people, and saying I cut it to one doesn't really tell the full story. I guess it makes sense. In twenty-two, we had six, so you cut it in half in twenty-two, and you cut it in half again. This is part of this. What's that law? Law of diminishing returns. Yeah. Okay. So, on when I came in from a couple of weeks ago, or less than a week ago, we talked about financing the swip, the stormwater stuff, and we put we're going to do that article. And in that short time, someone somehow, someone from the state that's too busy to realize that that. There's actually a town called Rutland decided to check us out. Check us out. I, I, I claim foul. Somebody <laughs> heard that. Somebody made it drop the dime. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe it. Actually, just if you don't mind. Go ahead. The people who called were federal employees. They're enforcement attorneys. This is the third call they made to Rutland. They made the boards aware, aware when they called the first couple times and put it in writing to the board. We haven't done anything, so they followed up on the third time and took enforcement action against the town. They're federal employees. The folks who talk called the town administrator's office today are uh, community liaison from the enforcement attorney's office. This is federal court action. They have already called us three times. They've sent stuff in writing. I wouldn't be surprised at all. So it was just coincidence that they did it? Yeah. That's interesting. I smell the fish. Darren's opinion. So, through the chair, what's the what's this little gem gonna put us for a liability? How much is that gonna be, Joe? They haven't found the town yet. But what do you? What would you take over a swag, O'Neill? That we got to try to find this money for. No, what they're giving think? us some chances. Excuse me, Joe. They're, they're going to give us a new chance with the latest call? Yeah. I was part of the conversation. They and they're going to give chance. us another chance. Yeah, they, Joe told them there's an article. He's sending them a, a copy of the article for a town meeting floor on um, what strides we're going to try to make in the future. So and are they going to set a dollar amount to us right now? Find us? No. But the red flag is popped. To the chair, we, we've certainly informed them of our plans and our intentions with this. Hopefully, if it passes, established stormwater utility. Hopefully, once we can work to establish a funding mechanism um, for this utility as well. If all goes well and we do have funding available in this enterprise fund uh, in this utility, that allows us to take care of those obligations. So, uh, street sweeping, um, outfall monitoring, catch basin cleaning. Uh, through contracting out some of these services, which also frees up uh, an opportunity for our existing staff to take care of their regular responsibilities that they're currently taking care of right now. So. We also told them about the possibility, and we told them about the situation with the budget, and we're going through that process now, and the possibility of if the two and a half uh, override does pass, that we now will have a line item for internships, which we've used before in this town for more years ago. So is it... If they're looking for action here, is it a bad thing to have $171,000 of unused revenue sitting at the bottom of our, we'll call it P&L, if we could use some of that towards getting that fund started and getting that rolling? Would that help to 
Is that would that help or make a difference, or is that a, a way something we should be looking at? Because we're asking the town to pay for this as an enterprise fund, yet they're going, they're seeing an override passing that's going to land 171,000 of excess revenue, even though they won't be taxed at that, obviously, if we don't use that. But you know, let's just. Gotcha. Um, thank you. <coughs> so a couple quick things. So most of the utility that we sent to you is stuff we should be doing, like street sweeping and cash basing cleaning, regardless, okay? <laughs> but there's some compliance stuff in there, is like checking your outfalls and doing some reporting and, and, and doing some outreach and the like. Maybe, let's say, round numbers, I'd say that costs you $75,000 annually. So you weren't doing that work. We are supposed to be, we have supposed to have been doing that work every year for like the last three. <laughs> so when you restore your budget, Okay, let's say the override passes and you restore your budget. There's no line items in place to do this work. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's, it's it act, um, the nature of complying with federal stormwater regulations actually increases DPW's scope or the town's scope for these services. Right. So when you restore it through the override, it's not going to make a difference because you weren't doing it anyways. Right. So I'm saying the, the right now the override budget that we have pa that we have suggested has excess revenue in it. I'm saying, should we be putting that towards this item that we should have been doing the whole time? Well, I, I don't believe it's an option question. any longer. I mean, so, Kinsley, I think that's why we're, you know, that's why we're talking and that's why we're uh, presenting to them our, our proposal for stormwater enterprise and utility and our plan moving forward once that's funded because, um, you know, other cities and towns that are able to do this. This is a recommended action from EPA and DEP for to address this um, responsibility mm -hmm. of cities and towns. So, um, on top of our regular responsibilities that the override um, would fund, certainly, if if you wanted to, you could use that uh, excess levy capacity to fund all of our responsibilities across the town. But that's why uh, we think that this is a best practice moving forward to establish this utility to allow us to free up some of our resources in our department. Sure. I don't think I disagree with that, but uh, you know, we're asking for the override and then we're also going to be pushing, and I know we decided to not start that, start funding the enterprise right away, but we're putting it on, out there so that people are gonna say, I'm gonna start paying more in taxes and I'm gonna pay for this enterprise. So it's just, there's, there's multiple things hitting that I think would be, if we could say, well, we're gonna defray the cost of this for an additional year because we're gonna use this, or it might just help to, Soften the blow a little bit potentially. And did you say it's already in the warrant? So the way that the article is worded <coughs> is that we aren't going to fund it until FY25. So I don't know that we could fund it because now the warrant is placed. <coughs> placed. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Well, well, we—I mean, we could, we could, oh, we could um, pay for it out of DPW if we increase the DPW yeah, budget. DPW budget, right? right. Yeah. But of so course, it, just, it wouldn't be out of the enterprise. That's all. Oh. Okay. <coughs> of course, if there is another town meeting, a special town meeting, um, you can always, um, you know, have another article to, with it, a established funding mechanism. I think that was maybe that was the reason why uh, the board had that discussion to defer to sometime in the future to allow. Uh, town staff to come up uh, with an important recommendation to the board and, and to the finance committee and to the community to establish, you know, rate the rate structure and, and you know, kind of the services that would be provided through this new utility. Yeah. And so far, they haven't come after us for everything. They cherry picked a couple key items and what we're required to do. And we, we have filled out the reports and done as much as we can. So it's not like they're going to come after you for everything. And I, I genuinely yeah. believe they're willing to negotiate. I think you'll end up with a consent order before you get fined. Absolutely, yeah. No, they they have no desire to fine. It's they want the work done. Can't like, get blood from a stone. <laughs> they want to fine and then get the work. Do we have the maps? Do we have the stormwater maps? Um, the, the mapping was never done. Yet. Has everyone else had a chance to look at everything that came out with the work in process budget that came from the town administrator's office? That's, that's probably wrong. When I did it, I'm sure, but I did it myself. I did 
UPS and stay on each catch. So all we're looking for now is twenty three dollars and eighty three cents. That's what I thought. I said, yeah. I know you're not that. getting a gift out of me. No. I pay way too much for no <laughs> services as it is. Nope. <laughs> well, the, the remainder of that should just cut. I mean, there's going to be additional funds coming from the, the difference in health insurance. We should just balance the budget with that as as going forward. And well, then, we can definitely do that once we, if we get that number, we can definitely take that. But we're going to, you're going to look into the police to see that. That as well. So there might be some there. So, Karen, mm -hmm. on the Sunday meeting over here in the big room, mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of people that brought up the fact, made, asked the question, did we know what we would be doing with a passing of the override to the longtime residents of the town who may be on fixed income? You know, we may be forcing them out of their, out of their houses. And then there was a conversation when Lyndon brought up the, uh, um, the possibility of what could be done with some uh, mitigation through programs in the, that the town might have. And then the conversation went to, uh, to do that. You have to be at poverty level or below to qualify. So there's, I think as, as we get into this, we're still, those are going to be things. And we, we I think we made the comment, and I don't want to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we made the comment that said that we're going to be affecting people either way. <clears throat> we're either going to be uh, affecting people and telling them that they have to pay the extra taxes and that might have an impact on the ability to stay, or we're going to be affecting people in the town. Residents likely that would be out of a job at some point. And, and services that the town is receiving, and uh, residents are receiving, right? but so not the, just jobs. Right. So, so, so there's, there was that conversation that went on. I, I don't, uh, you can, it's sort of like the damned if you do, damned if you don't. I don't know how you can address that. Um, just, we should be aware. That's yeah. all. Yeah. It's a t I mean, it's a tough thing. Is it to your point? It's it's there's losses on both sides of that aspect, and um, that's a tough thing about you know money. Yeah. No, what sort? At our last the, the last meeting that I was at, we voted to <coughs> post a version of the budget on the town website that said there were additional cuts that needed to be made. Mm -hmm. We've done that, yeah. or close to having done that. Well, we're looking at some of them, so it's still a work in process, but yes. Can we and should we update what is posted? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do anything formal about that? I would I say let's. So. I would say let's do it just to make sure. Mm, I don't yes. want anybody to ever come and say that we didn't. So if yeah. I could have a motion, it's it's still says, huh? it should be updated to the, the. We made a few motions about adjustments tonight, so whatever the outcome of those adjustments yep. are is what the, should be posted. So it's going to be this sheet or something close to the sheet. It should be that sheet. I would say it's exact. It's just what's on the internet now, yeah. but changed to the numbers that it's supposed you to. Be. You want motion for that? Yes. Motion to. Uh, um, adjust and update the posting of the budget. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Um, so someone just made the comment that this $23 we would, this is in the cuts budget, get that so it's zero. Yep. what it needs to be. Yeah. Sure. Um, one of the things that we said we needed to do uh, in the next few meetings that we had, this would be one of them, was prepare for a second town meeting if the override doesn't pass. This failed override budget does that? Has that? the only preparation at this point we need to do, or do we need to have other I think options it, available? 
I think that the only thing we have at this moment that's kind of lingering is the conversation that's going to be followed up with the police and looking at their budget. But other than that, we don't have anything on the table or there's nothing additional. And then whatever we can possibly look at from health insurance savings from uh, un unemployed uh, or cutting to under. So there will be some I, I think there will be some savings in that line item that could potentially go to refunding some other items. Um, and we'll have to decide where that would go or the, the town administrator's office would do that. But um, at this point, I don't think we have any other. I mean, we mm -hmm. Well, so I, I guess to Ted's point, that change, those changes would uh, accommodate the whatever comes in here and then the $23. So those changes would get us to zero. And that's what we're expecting Austin's office to come back with. Okay. So next Thursday, um, Tamika is going to have for us the motions for the um, warrant articles that we can make a recommendation. <coughs> Do we need to have a meeting on Tuesday? I cannot make either. Just, I'm going to be away. Will we be able to have the, month, uh, the discussion for police by next Thursday? Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. okay. Sounds like we could go with just Thursday and not <coughs> Thursday. Sure. I don't know what else we would talk about. Um, I'm going to pass this around. This is from the town of Goshen, which has 900 and something people. <laughs> Um, and look at how nice they give this out at the town meeting for the budget. And it was given to me. We're not, you just say we're not going to meet Tuesday. I, I, I don't think uh, anyone wants to meet next Tuesday, do they? Well, we, there's nothing, there's no agenda. So, one, so are we going to meet Thursday? Thursday, we're going to do the recommendations. Uh, okay. on well, the I'm just making sure we're yes. clear. Okay. So Thursday, articles. next Thursday at 6.15. Uh, 6 okay. Unless you're going on vacation. I might. <laughs> That's one <was> very much <laughs> fun. I'm sorry, but I just want to make sure I was clear on the stuff. Wow. So Karen and, and a couple of other people at several points have said that potentially at the town meeting, uh, if the, I'm talking about a second town meeting, if the override were not to pass, we could hear motions from the floor that would make changes to the budget. And I'm pretty sure we had a kind of a consensus that there was no point in trying to pre-think what those might be and have contingencies, but I just want to make sure that Um, you guys can make that decision, in my opinion. We won't have the time to put a pause on the meeting to try to figure out if someone makes a, a motion on the floor to add $13,000. Where are we going to find that $13,000 well, in this cut budget? So I'm just, just spitballing here, but um, if somebody's going to make a motion to increase, and maybe it's through uh, the moderator, but... Someone's going to make a motion to increase the budget. Mm -hmm. Could they not require them to propose a decrease? It's not required. No, it's not required. But I'm saying, couldn't the moderator um, insist or request that if you're going to increase, if you're going to say, I want to add $13,000 to the, the um, animal control, that that person making that request should have the responsibility to suggest that it comes out of police or town administrator or I don't know pick up pick up the department. I mean, you, it, it's easy. You can. I mean, like your point is well taken. We're going to have the, the time something. to be able to go back and do no. that stuff. You Usually at town meeting, that's what the moderator or, or the selectman would say is, it, okay, you want to add $13,000, where's it coming You can't do that. You can't. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. Because you don't have any, you don't have any funding on anything you're voting on at town yeah. meeting. I understand. Because you don't know what your your uh, revenues are. I understand that, Until but how can a person just add money without a... Well, that's what we are doing. 
Wait, what You're do you just mean? adding numbers to a budget? We know what revenues are. Yeah. If you don't know what they are because you don't have you don't have everything that's come in that you're going to have, you can't yeah. do that to the fall meeting. Not till the end of the year. No, we have a budget. We have a budget. You don't have a certified. You don't have no, no, free no, cash. No, you don't. I don't think that's oh, correct. Yeah, I know in past meetings, dollars. people have been asked. Whether or not to, that's real. Might have been unofficial. It's still a budget. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I think right. the moderator so can ask that. If you get more items balance. on the budget, it still isn't real, but it's still a budget. But I, I just, I guess, I'm just questioning the fact that someone could stand up and say, "I want to add 14 million dollars to the pool." And then have that pass because everybody likes a nice, nice neat pool, and not have any way for that to be funded. And all I would say is sit there and say, well, all you got to do is increase your uh, your R and V monies you get for uh, cars. Okay. Because we're historically low. So, how does that get done other than a motion? Well, you don't have to because there's a the revenue. You're not voting revenues. You're only voting a budget. Right. Only but, but it has to be related to the article that's on the floor also. It has to be an amendment to the article that's no, presented. I understand that. But then, right. I'll just say on our revenues, we, we're very close. We're right. very close to what Wait, we, don't, we don't. We don't. No, we're not exact right. because you never know until, like, Correct. Well, until the end of the year when you're closing everything else. But, exactly. But <laughs> our estimates, if you look at our revenue <laughs> sheets, our <laughs> estimates are, are so close. It's, we don't have any fluff in there. You right. know what I mean? It's not so we like we're, for, we're trying to boost them up as high as we can we're not without. Sitting having here, DOR gonna, say that's too high. So you don't have any extra money in there for health insurance? We're just going to have to take yeah. some cash. In case you got another family coming in? or Well, I, in my expenses, in my expenses, I have an extra, but not on the revenue side of things. You know, when we're estimating the revenue to balance this, we're, we're very concerned. close. I mean, we had like one. I, right, but if that person doesn't come in, then you have excess revenue. Yes. Excess expense. Well, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have excess revenue because you have revenue yeah. you haven't spent. But if we have two more that come on, <laughs> like we did this year, then we're short. How much did that thing cost? If someone voted to move money from one line item, even give the account numbers to another line item. Yes. You take it from the town administrative salary. Yeah. And go to the library, and that went through the floor and the yeah. attorney. It went through yeah. the the then moderator and the then attorney. And all the folks here, without incident, they, no don't have, they don't have to say where it's coming from. Yeah. But more to his point, that that can happen. I'm that can point. happen, but they can also just say, "I want to add, you know, something to a department, and then we have to figure out how to balance." I mean, we could ask if they make a, a motion for adding expense. We could say, do you have a suggestion on where that could come sure. from? I, I can't imagine and we can't you, say that. We could ask, and when they go like this, we Well, they say, <laughs> I'll come and sit down with you. <laughs> right. It is my understanding that the moderator can consider a motion out of order if it does not have both elements to it, and he can make that point at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, that's interesting. So the moderator can enforce that rule. What, you have to find the relevant revenue? That, that you have to have offsetting. You need to offset. We start with the balanced budget. that a town meeting. What's that? We've never voted the revenues a town meeting. He's not saying revenue. He's no, saying, I'm saying that the balance has. No, 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 he's no, saying, no. Uh, where is it coming from? Where is the offset coming from? You have to take from? it from I'm somewhere going, to convert right. it to oh, that. Yeah. 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 If I'm adding Which expense Which is what here, you I'm said. You're taking it from somewhere else. I believe the moderator has that. How do we do? How do we count on all those possibilities? We, we don't. You can't. You can't count on everything, but you try to do because you can't count I mean, everything. there was that year that it happened that Margaret took her cut to her salary. Yeah. Because that's the only way we could balance everything. That's what happened. I mean, that's the one that sticks out the most. She did it right on there on the floor to balance it. Okay. So. Thank you. That is yeah, but th those were tran basically transfers. Correct. She transferred the money from that line item to these line items that she, right. that was all part of the motion. And that wasn't. Correct. She just didn't stand up and say, I right? want to add $100,000 to whatever. And I, I, I can't remember exactly how it happened. I remember <clears throat> we had to have a conference to try to figure out where we were going to get the money. Right? Yes, she she, did. Did. she The motion was to take money from that line item, or whatever line item was for salary, and then this amount went here, this amount went there, that amount went there. It's the only way you can do an article. Well, I just want to make sure that that opportunity was there. So that, um, or the expectation, I guess is better put it, that if somebody stands up with a mic and they say, add uh, $28 to this particular line, they have to come up with the $28 coming out of some, some other place. 
That only makes sense because if you don't do that, you're going to be you right so down. far out of whack. And that's what Karen was saying. That's correct. Then, then it, it turns away from us. And so we're in <coughs> one town meeting, and we, go, we do a override. It passes, goes to vote the next time. It fails at the ballot. We come back to another town meeting thinking that we have a balanced budget that's with all the cuts, and then having people at that town meeting say, no, no, that's not acceptable. Put money back in over here. And tell me where you're going to take it from. Yeah. I can that's just what it has to be. make a comment to that. I think if we if we get to that point, let's say, let's hope we're not going to get to that point where we have to go back and do this, do this cut Amen. budget. It needs to be presented before we can start voting on anything. Somebody needs to get up, hopefully, a <laughs> new town administrator, and say, this is a painful, painstaking job that we did to get to, the, to these cuts, and we're asking you to support the way that it is. It's all of it's going to hurt, and, and you put that out there first. Yeah. So you're telling the people, please don't try to change any of this because it's, it, all of it's going to hurt across the board. So, so you put it out. Exactly. You yeah, need to present it first and say, this, is, this took so long for all of us to put this together <coughs> and put it out there first before, it, before it, because people can change anything, but if you lead with them, you can hope for the best. I think we're all doing that now when we're doing our <laughs> presentations. I think all of us are saying how much we need this override and yeah. how we don't want to yeah. see yeah. the cuts come. I think we're all yeah. doing that. That's for yeah. sure. So uh, one other thing, who is available on Sunday to go to do the presentation on Sunday? Where is it again? Is it here again? The library. Alex, are you saying yes? I am on vacation. <clears throat> Not okay. be available. Tom will be there. So I'll go. I'll go Tom's pretty good. Tom's on vacation. He needs to go. We only need three. We don't need any more than three. Oh, that's for sure. Max three. I'm only one from vacation. I got another two weeks to wind down. I can. Maybe. As long as there's, you know, people that are willing to do it, that's good. So that's Sunday at the library at what time? Well, well, now we have too many to be careful, though. It's only be three. So, Tommy, are you thinking about going? The what now? Did you say? You get a quorum. If, we, if four of us show up, we've got a quorum. We're going to have to have a meeting, finance committee meeting. So we got Pete and Darren. No, you don't have to have a uh, meeting if you're not discussing that. No, once you start discussing finances, if you've got four people there. Now, Lynn, you weren't go. watching this when you were on vacation? I don't know. Nobody's going to show up. Told him, so I'll go so to one. Pete's going yeah. for sure. That's right. So there, I'll go. The other 30 matters. side, too. Lynn, don't go. Or we'll be I will that. double check with everybody before I show up. Okay. okay. Seems like well, a small idea. At least you haven't been asked not to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Karen? Yes. Is it worth discussing at one of our future meetings what we are going to hand out? Um, sure, we can do that, but that would be something for the future. I just thought that was a really nice presentation. Where'd you get that? A, a, a very dear friend of mine gave that right. to me. Yeah, but did they give you the idea how much it costs to do that? It's 900 and something people in that town. I mean... Somehow, I don't think that costs a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. No, so no. somebody's company made up a hundred of those, and that's yeah. the end of that. Yeah. Probably. I, I don't really care how we did it. I think it's really nice. That's a really nice thing, how it's done. Make me want to say yes about that. That's too many pages. All opposed? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye.